All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP. This is an HP Envy X360 convertible model 13M-BD0023DX. All right, so it looks like the customer already lost the rubber feet here. So we're gonna have to just peel up the adhesive strips. All right, I'm gonna use a small flathead screwdriver to do this. Uh, basically, you just wanna get in the edge of it and then just peel it up. All right, it might be a little tricky. Yeah, it's being tough, so it helps to also push down in a hole there, and that will cause it to lift a little bit of that material, and then you can get underneath and peel that up. All right, so we're going to peel that away, and we're going to set that aside. We don't need to put that back, but uh, it does keep the screws there if for some reason they come out. All right, and it looks like we're going to be using a JAS-1 as well as a T5 or Torx-5 screwdriver. All right, so let's go ahead and remove the screws using the JAS-1 from under here, and then a T5 or Torx-5 screwdriver to remove those. If this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. You do want to keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern and I remove them. So we have three there and then we have two there. All right. Um, if you can, can't contribute that way, it would help a lot. If you could watch a few of my other videos um, and then like and comment on them as well. All right. We're using the T5 Torx 5 screwdriver now. All right, and after we do that, let's go ahead and pull this bottom cover off. Let's see if we can use a suction cup. If not, we're going to have to pry it up either with fingernails or some pry tools. So I'm going to use the suction cup here, and we're just going to pull on it here. Okay, and it's not coming up, so we're probably going to have to just pry in there. Oh, there we go. So as you can see, we were able to pull up a gap here, and once we get that gap started, it can... You can actually just go down with a pry tool or your fingernail and just lift it like that. All right, we're gonna pull on here, same thing. I actually don't even have a fingernail here because I cut it too short. So we're gonna use this finger, okay? And we're just gonna continue pulling. There we go. All right, and then the front here. Oh, looks like that's stuck pretty strong. So we're gonna kind of grab in here. I'm gonna hold in here and I'm gonna kind of just try and wiggle the cover side to side and see if that will release and there we go. Okay, there's the inside of the cover. The customer said after they plugged in like a dual monitor setup to the USB-C port, it stopped turning on. So if we're lucky, it might just need a battery reset and that might get it working. If not, they might have fried the motherboard because it can't handle that output. So let's go ahead and disconnect the uh, battery here. The battery is BN03XL, so if you need to replace that, BN03XL right there. All right, um, and then I'm gonna actually undo the screws, though technically you don't need to undo the screws to remove the battery, uh, the connection, all right? You just need to pull that cable out. But anyways, I'm gonna remove the screws using the JS1 screwdriver, so that way it's a little bit easier to remove. Okay, so let's get all these screws out. And then I can kind of show you what's underneath, unless there's all these, a bunch of cables holding it in place. Let's see, we got those four. Oh, there's the strong magnet there. So there's two strong magnets on either side here. And those magnets actually um, help with folding it backwards. And I'm pretty sure they also tell the computer that the screen is flipped over, okay? All right, so we got uh, six screws out. There were four along the top and then two here, All right? They actually mark it M2 by 3.5. There's also two small magnets here. So there's four magnets in that corner there. All right, we're gonna carefully lift this up. All right, I'm gonna rotate it a little bit to the side. And then what we're gonna do, the wings here of this connector, I'm gonna just wiggle them side to side. All right, and there we go, there's the battery. All right, so battery has been disconnected. The battery also acts as the CMOS, BIOS, RTC, real-time clock battery, whatever you wanna call it, it goes by so many names. All right, and we're just gonna clean this up a little bit. Again, I don't think this is gonna work, but we'll try, all right? We're going to carefully now open up the screen and we're going to press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. All right, this makes it a lot safer to work on, especially if you're going to do anything with the screen cable. But in this case, we're just draining the power so that way um, we can basically reset it. Okay. So let's just go a little bit longer. All 
All right, so there we go. <sighs> Much more than 15 seconds, so that should be good. There's no replaceable RAM here, soldered to the motherboard. Pretty sure it's like underneath this, there's a metal plate here that's covered by that plastic. CPU soldered to the motherboard as well. All right, if you undo this heatsink, you do need, need to redo the thermal paste, so keep that in mind. There's the keyboard backlight connector here. These have flip latches that you kind of flip it up and then you can pull the cables out, but I'm gonna leave it. Keyboard connector, same thing, flip latch. Um, fan connector there. This one you grab and wiggle the wings just like the battery. Um, you have this connector here, which, what is that? Fingerprint reader? I don't know where that's, oh yeah, fingerprint reader. Okay, so they have the fingerprint reader here going up into the um, keyboard area. Then you have this cable for the touchpad or trackpad. Uh, speaker connector here. This actually connects both speakers. A wire runs along down here to the other speaker. <sighs> All right, it's kind of dusty. I'm gonna try and clean that a little bit. <sighs> All right. There's an M.2, most likely PCIe NVMe SSD under here. I'm not gonna take it out because the issue is it's just not turning on right and I don't wanna mess around with stuff um, and then possibly make other issues happen. Uh, but there's one screw here. You should be able to remove it with the JAS1 screwdriver. Don't try and use like a PH1 or JAS0 or PH0 because you can strip that. Um, but if you really want to and you're willing to risk it, make sure to push down pretty hard so the screwdriver doesn't pop out. All right, um, but anyway, standard screw, um, standard M.2, uh, after you undo the screw, it pops up slightly and then you can pull it out. There will be a thermal pad holding it onto the SSD, so make sure to take that out. Um, but there's this plastic on top that you will have to peel out and it's tucked in here. All right, you got the DC jack charge port connector right there. You have this connector, most likely for the webcam or the camera, possibly for the touch screen as well. You got this little connector, which I'm not too sure what that's for. It might be a Hall effect sensor. Um, let's see here, if there's a magnet here. There's no magnet here. Doesn't feel like there's a magnet there. Let's see. Yeah, there's no magnet here. So I'm not too sure what that little board is for. Um, hmm. If anyone knows, let us know. It says JIR2 infrared I don't think so um, anyways I don't know what that little uh, board is here um, and then you have the LCD LVDS connector sometimes that's also for the touch screen and there's a flip latch there to pop that out and again I'm not gonna mess with that let's go ahead and see if um, plugging in power works with this the customer said that USB-C does work with it um, but I'm gonna also try an HP charger if this doesn't work I don't have the HP charger with me over here um, so I'll plug it in elsewhere, but let's see if plugging this in gets any life. I don't see any signs of life at all. Oh, power button's actually working. It's lighting up. So I think that might be it doing the power reset. Let's see if the screen comes up. Because we disconnected the battery, again, it resets the BIOS, CMOS, RTC, real-time clock. So sometimes when you turn this on, it is going to take a while. It might be waiting to reset the BIOS. So let's give it some time and see if anything happens. Um, it is taking quite a while, so I don't know. Hmm. There's also another thing I noticed, the camera. That's like a white dot in there. That's interesting. I don't know. Um, anyways, the light for the power button is on, and there you go. Okay, so I think we're good. I'm gonna turn this off, and then I'm gonna put the battery back in and we'll try the normal charger. Luckily, um, this thing protected itself. It, I guess it detected a short there and then it just cut power to the system. So we're gonna get this back in. And if you replace the battery, make sure you put the connector the right side up with these uh, metal uh, exposed pins faced up. You don't wanna put that flat side faced up or you can fry your computer. Okay, so we're gonna get that and we're gonna pinch the connector back into place. Let me rotate this because it'll be easier to work on. All right, pinch both sides just like that. There we go. Get the battery back lined up and we'll get the six screws back in. And then we just gotta get the bottom cover back on and we should be good to go. Um, it looks like that might have fixed it. So let's get all these screws in. And yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, 
comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Uh, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot. If you could watch a few of my other videos and then leave a comment on them, you can just comment whatever, um, just to let the algorithm know that you're interested in my channel and it will help other people find it and help them fix their computers as well. All right. So that's pretty much it. Oh, why is this clip coming out here? Maybe I should put a little super glue there. That's kind of weird. All right, let me see here. We'll just put a very tiny amount. Okay, I don't know why. I don't know why that piece was coming out, but uh, this was kind of coming away. So we're gonna try and just hold that and glue that back in. Oh, I see why. He dented it. You see that dent there? Yeah, that's why it's broken. All right, anyways, I'm gonna wipe off the excess and then we're just gonna put this thing back together. All right. Uh, hold that for a few more seconds. All right, and this piece uh, I believe we do have to get this bottom, these bottom clips in first, so let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll just swing it down. All right, so get that in, just like this. Click that all into place while you're holding this side up. Okay, should look flush. Then you work your way up the sides, just like that. Okay, and then work away that bent part as well. All right, and there we go. Got everything locked into place. Let's get all these screws back in and we should be good to go. All right, you're welcome to stay as I get all these screws back in. Uh, we are gonna power it back up and make sure everything is good. All right, I think the customer said that they haven't actually used this laptop in a long time. It was just sitting in their closet uh, because after it fried, they weren't able to use it. So let's get it back working so that they can use it again. All right, last two screws. And again, the BIOS does reset, so you do wanna check the date and time. Um, if you want, you can turn off and then turn back on the automatic time adjustment, and then it will automatically readjust itself if you're connected to the internet. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead now and just put back on this adhesive strip. Okay. go all right we'll flip this back over all those broken plastic bits that were in there let's see we're probably gonna have to plug it back in but let's see I don't even know if the battery has any charge nope it's not doing anything so let's plug this back in I'm gonna plug in the USB-C again and hopefully yep we have power all right, so that's pretty much it. It's gonna take a while to start back up and tell you the BIOS was reset to press enter. But yeah, other than that, not much else to it. Hopefully it helped again. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Well, I'll wait for it to start up again because some people like to make sure they ask them to see it start up after I already know it's working. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and wait for it so I can show you guys that the screen is gonna come on again. And hopefully the battery's gonna charge. Here you can see, all right. The thing about the CMOS is invalid and it's gonna reset itself to the default. So you just press enter. And then it should restart itself. The power went off and now it's back on. And then it should start back up normally. So here you can see the HP logo and it's spinning. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye, let's drop this.